What did you think you were really good at until you saw someone who was actually really good at it? Table tennis. We had a table at work. And so I started playing anytime I could. With whoever I could. I'd played a little when I was a kid. So picked it back up quickly and started getting half decent. Eventually. I started playing with one co-worker fairly regularly. He was good. No doubt. At first he was clearly just following with me. Not actually putting it away when he'd get the chance. This made it more fun for me to be sure. And offered me great practice. Anyway. After about a year. I'd gotten to the point where I could cream everybody I'd play with ease. Except him. And our games had elevated drastically. To the point of all out smashing the ball back and forth standing 10 feet away from the table. And I actually started winning some games every now and then. I was ecstatic. Well one day. After losing a pretty heated game to me. And me being just a little bit pompous about it. My table tennis buddy co-worker pulls a total Inigo Montoya on me flips the paddle from his left hand, which he 100% consistently used when playing against me, into his right and says to me, You know I'm right handed. Right? I did not. Nor did I ever win another game against him. Ping pong. I made the mistake of playing an old guy that hangs out at one of the bars and he effing wrecked me. It wasn't even close. He returned all of my best serves effortless and would put the craziest spin on all of his shots. He gave me good advice afterwards and told me I play too fast for my own good. I bought him a drink and shamefully went back to my friends. Me too. The guys in my dorm freshman year would play pretty darn competitive ping pong every single night. We all got really good. And I was one of the best. I guess word got out that our dorm was a good place to play ping pong. So we started getting people come from all over campus. One night. This one guy came that absolutely dominated all of us. Balls flying like bananas. Balls spinning sideways off the table. It was just ridiculous. I remember he beat me 21-4. And I played really well for myself. My dad likes gardening and loves his plumy rear. He has about 30. He recently found a local Plumeria club on Facebook and went to meet up. He was the only one there with less than 100. My mother has stopped complaining about him having too many Plumeria. I thought I was pretty good at Tetris. People who saw me play were quite impressed. Then I started playing Tetris 99. Turns out I'm not that good. I began piano lessons at an early age. 5. And my parents and my teacher made me believe I was some kind of fabulous child prodigy. I later found out I was merely a worm compared to real pianists. But I did enjoy playing the piano. So there's that. There's a ton of studies which dictate that praising your kids hard work praising your kids skills. Keeps them practicing and doesn't make them believe they are somehow way better than others due to some innate ability etc. Or something. Hiking. I honestly thought I'd be one tough moth affair. Cancelling my apartment and going into the big wide world of Scandinavia. Faroe and Iceland with only my backpack and sleeping outside. Then I met a guy who just came back from a 700km glacier hike at minus 40c in Greenland who came to Faroe's just to recover. Sadly that guy became my partner. And he had shown me in so many occasions of what my body is literally not able to endure that I had to readjust my whole self image. I eat more chocolate now. I am a better whistler than maybe 98% of the population but compared to a world class whistler I sound like a corpse fart. Skiing. Thought I was the quickest of the quick. Craving perfect parallel lines. Living my life on the edge. Nope. Ski team whizzed by me when I thought I was going fast. Turns out. I'm just a buffoon on two planks now plowing around ungracefully. In 2015 for spring break took my daughter to Sugarloaf in Maine. Us national ski championships were held that week. We were on the slopes with members of us national ski team. A typical recreational skier may go 20 miles per hour on a steep slope. Racers warming up for events would pass you going 60 miles per hour on those slopes amazing to watch, and humbling too. 8 ball and 9 ball. I had a table at home and would practice while watching TV. No one could beat me. In college I'd play a $1 a ball. Everyone owed me money. 
Then I played someone that regularly entered tournaments. I was lucky if I got to shoot because he was running the table every game. Friends of mine had a pool table in their apartment and thought they were pretty good. They were out at a bar with tables and there was an older guy playing alone. But only using one arm to shoot. They asked him why and he said. It's too easy with both arms and they watched him run the table. Twice. Without missing a shot. Programming. Learned a lot in college and at my first job. I switched based on my skills. Came to new company. Met my senior who is incredibly talented and realized I had long way to go. For a long time it was hard for me to even realize what separated a fantastic programmer from an adequate one. Even when I was working with other programmers. There are obviously some basic fundamentals. You need to know the quirks of the language you're working in and how to use it. You need an understanding of data and code structures and where they work best. You need to have a consistent and robust organizational structure to your code so that it's easy to expand the functionality of it later on. And you need to develop so many other small skills. Just getting to that point can take years of working in a language. But it always seemed like once you had a good grasp of those fundamentals that was all there really was. You were essentially equipped to solve any problem you could understand as well as anyone else. Then later I actually met someone who I would consider a fantastic programmer and it really is amazing the difference. It's not that they use extremely complex structures in their code or that they write code which is somehow lean and simplified down to its fundamentals. More it's just very efficient. Wherever possible they fall back onto some aspect of the language to make their job easier and as a result are able to write high quality code which they tap out so quickly and consistently it almost seems like a train of thought. As well they were just incredibly easy to talk to about the subject and had an explanation ready for every decision they'd made and why they thought it was best. It's really incredible just how skilled some people are. Guitar Hero. I never met anyone who could beat me. Then I saw a dude on Yautab 100% bark at the moon with his back to the screen and I'm done. I had a friend who was an overall shtai dude. Obnoxious. Rude. Selfish. And a big baby. Turns out he's incredible at video games and also a good musician. He's made music that regularly got tens of thousands of views with no advertising and no connections. He won first a major US citywide guitar hero competition and has been grandmaster on Overwatch. But again. Dude was really self-centered and not in the I'm better than you way. But just like eats all the appetizers at a party or crashed parties or asked for stuff constantly when he was busy. Borrowed things without asking, not stealing because he would bring them back. And specifically I remember sleeping over at his house as a kid and he wouldn't let me play any games with him and when it was bedtime. He had me sleep on the floor and literally gave me his pants to cover up with as a blanket. Just really stupid childish. Haven't spoken to him in years. But he would shred you in any game. As a 23 year old birder. It's humbling to be beside a retired 70 plus year old who can see birds where none seem to be. And identify them. The human ability for subconscious pattern recognition is truly amazing. You'll get there. It just takes time. I've come to the realization that I'm very mediocre at a lot of things. I can do most anything. Just not well. Math. I'm a theoretical physicist. And I always felt I was pretty good at math in undergrad. Then I met the professor I'm working for right now. One of my life goals is to become at least 3 stroke 4 as good a theoretical physics as he is. Then I met Ed Witten. Then I read some papers by Freeman Dyson. Damn. It's so crazy how high the math ceiling goes. You prove an elegant solution. Then find a paper that does that plus uses that to prove 80 different things all in notation that is as foreign to me as Russian. Math is fun. Driving. Everyone thinks they're a good driver. Sit along with a professional driver as they go through a course. And then try to do the same. So humbling. As a professional driver. I can't tell you how many times people in high school jabbed and poked at me to street race against them. I always turned it down because you spend your childhood at a racetrack and you learn how dangerous an idiot behind the wheel can be. Finally. One summer I got fed up with it and invited the usual suspects to local karting track that had car rentals available. I told them if they beat me. I'd cover their rentals for the night, not cheap, 
and buy them dinner on the drive back. They were obviously thrilled to take the bet. Before the 8 or so minute race had ended. I had lapped them both twice and smashed the monthly track record by a good 2 seconds. Not going to lie. It felt really good. Drawing and painting. A huge part of being an artist is the near constant beatings your confidence takes. I used to teach high school art. And those kids were amazing. They should have been teaching me. When I was in 5th grade. I didn't really have any friends. Was bullied. Picked last for sports. Etc. At recess and at home. I started running because I wanted to be good at it. It went on for a few months and I had convinced my little 10 year old mind that I was a superb runner and super fast. One day in PE. They basically had us race each other. I got put up against these two popular girls that were best friends and I just knew that this was my moment and all my work was going to pay off and people will like me. Spoiler alert, they effing smoked me. Fighting. I won a ton of amateur MMA bouts and a few professional. But then I met someone who beat the effing brakes off of me for like 3 rounds and then choked my A out. Turns out. I am pretty okay at it. But I am no world champion lol. At one point I thought I was pretty savvy in excel since I was the best at it out of the people I knew. Well. Then I meet someone who really knew how to use excel and realize that I really only knew the basics.